The one thing that we try to get across up front is the only reason we would be doing root cause analysis is if there was a gap in performance of some type. It doesn't matter what your business is. There has to be some type of gap in performance for us to want to do an RCA. This means that we feel we should be at a certain level and that we're actually not there. So why aren't we there? That's why we do the RCA. Then I wanted to be able to show you exactly where do failures come from. The germination of a failure, if you will. We start off with bad systems, but we have system, organizational systems in place in order to be able to provide people information to make better decisions. When those information systems are obsolete, inadequate, or non-existent, then people are at a disadvantage to make good decisions. So deficient systems or uh, malintent forces bad information into the head of an individual. So now we're between the ears of people that have to make decisions and we're providing them bad information. As a result, I'm going to likely make a poor decision which is going to result in a cause and effect chain of events that are observable now because I've taken an action or chosen not to that will result in some type of undesirable outcome. And at that point, we have to do something about it because we, we can't turn our eye on it anymore. We were not able to break the chain. We've had something bad happen. So I wanted to familiarize you with some terms because they will be seen as labels when we label causes in ProAct On Demand. The bad systems are called latent root causes. This is simply because they're always there. If I have a latent root cause, uh, you know, these paper systems can't hurt anybody by themselves. They have to become activated by a human action. Then when we have a poor decision, that's simply a human uh, root cause. It's a um, error of omission or commission by the human being. And when the human being makes that decision, it triggers physical consequences. So just remember the terms latent, human, and physical, and this is what they mean. In context to the logic tree, which will be in our analyze section, the A in PROACT, if you will, it is really a representation of a timeline. It's what a picture would look like of a thought. We're starting out with the green box, which is our event. It's the least acceptable consequence of that undesirable outcome. And we move backwards, and we say, well, how did that happen? We come up with our modes. These are the reasons that we know that that event occurred. Then the purple uh, line around that top level is called the top box. This represents things that we know to be true. Now, we don't know why they're true at this point. We just know that they're true. And then we start moving back, like the film graphic to the left. We're moving back in time, frame to frame, and we're asking the question, how could that mode have occurred? We're coming up with the possibilities, and then we're going to say that we're going to use our evidence and say whether it either did or didn't happen. We're going to continue to follow that questioning with the things that are true. We will continue to drive down until we find these physical, human, and latent root causes. Now it's very important that when we get to the human root, we're going to quit asking the question how could, and we're going to ask the question why. Why would someone have made this decision? Because true root cause analysis is about understanding why that person thought it was the right decision at the time that they made it. And lastly, I want to be able to give you an orientation for the, the major tabs in ProAct On Demand which represent any investigative process. Step number one is the preserving of event data. This is the collecting of evidence. Step number one is always collecting the evidence. Then we have to put our team together, ordering the analysis team. This is to dampen the bias. If we have something to lose or gain by the outcome of that analysis, then people on the other side are going to cry foul because they're going to say it's a biased analysis. Okay, now we have the team, we have evidence, which is the pieces of the puzzle, and now we have to be able to depict some type of cause and effect relationship uh, in a graphic fashion. That's why we're using the logic tree that I just described to determine causation. And causation will follow the form of physical human and latent root causes. And naturally when we determine that uh, we want to be able to do something about it. So we go into communicating our findings and recommendations. And of course when we develop our recommendations and have them approved we actually have to do them. And then when we do them we want to be able to track for bottom line impact so I can relate and correlate that my recommendation 
caused this bottom line impact. And really that's what we want you to remember. Out of this is that the PROACT acronym stands for Preserving, Ordering, Analyzing, Communicating, and Tracking. Now let's go see how they work in the program. And what I want you to notice now is that I'm going to get my home page screen and it says I would like to launch the PROACT RCA module. And that's what we're going to do. You'll notice in here I have a bunch of my examples in here but this is exactly what you would see. So what I want to go through is that when you get in here for your guest account, let's go ahead and open a new analysis because this is exactly where you would start. So remember, start with new analysis. And I'm just going to put in some generic data and I'm going to say that this is a guest account demo. It's going to ask me for my analysis description, which is not a required field. It's going to ask me for my analysis type. Under whose umbrella is this analysis being conducted? It's going to ask me estimated annual cost of the event if there were any. Now these are not, uh, that is not a required field. I'm not going to focus on the abilities, but I'm going to show capabilities that in Proact On Demand, you can set the accounts up to reflect your own facilities, divisions, departments. You can even change these labels if your nomenclature is a little bit different. If there's equipment involved, your equipment type, class, code, other, manufacturer. This is our critical success factors, and this is basically the guidelines of the team that if we had set up our team, we want to, them to be able to follow these rules. A team charter, one paragraph statement saying why are we together as a team, and there's even a generic one that takes into account your name of the analysis if you'd like. Your team members, in this particular case, the guest account is not likely to uh, have uh, team members, so I just want to be able to show you again, this is a capability with an actual account where you could assign team members to your analysis. You can give them various types of permission if you'd like. It's going to ask you in one of the last steps of the wizard is when are we going to start, when are we going to finish. It'll give us positive reinforcement and then it'll say would you like to open your new analysis. Okay, so now I'm into my analysis and what I wanted to highlight to you was the orientation that preserve, order, analyze, communicate, and track. These are the same elements of the PROACT uh, process that I described in the PowerPoints earlier. Now for this guest account demo, we're not going to focus on the majority of these areas because I want you to be able just to get a feel for how to create a quick analysis and generate some type of output. In the preserve area, this is just where we collect all of our evidence. We, we say what is the data category, which are parts, position, people, paper, and paradigms. What do we want to get? How are we going to get it? Who's going to get it? When are they going to get it by? And did they get it? We can also go ahead and establish file links, which is documentations that support uh, that particular type of data we were going to collect. In the order section, this is going to represent all of our teaming information. If we had team members, they would show up here. If you remember, we identified our critical success factors, our charter, and our dates and comments. For the most part, this is a static area, which you can come back in, at this area in order and be able to make changes. But the area we really want to focus on is the analyze. We are starting off with a very blank canvas here. Now we want to be able to start our logic tree. You remember, I talked about our top box being events and modes. The easiest way to do that is to start with our little wizard here that says tree top box. So what is our undesirable outcome? we would put that in here and then we would say in what modes have we had that created our undesirable outcome. Mode 1, Mode 2, and Mode 3. Okay, so we're going to hit finish and essentially Proact On Demand has built our top box for us. Now what I can do is go ahead and say, well, how did mode number two occur? And I can, when I click on any block in here, I'm going to get a menu of every uh, option that is available to do with that block. I can edit my text in there. Anything associated to do with the node is going to be in there. I can add a new one. I can delete that one. I can cut, 
copy and paste from here. Okay, what we want to be able to do here is let, let's do a demo and let's just say I want to add a node. It's going to say what text do you want in here? So I'm going to say hypothesis number one. And you can see how that's added. When I'm in a team environment, I may want to use this tab up here that says build hypothesis list. And I, in the hypothesis list, I might want to say I want hypothesis number two. I want to store it because my team is giving me these and I want to be able to capture what they're telling me. And then I'm going to say hypothesis three. So I want to capture all their ideas without delay. So this is essentially a holding bin for our hypotheses. Then I want to be able to say, I highlight the parent, and I take my hypotheses that I want to be the child to that parent, and I say add. And you'll notice that it puts them in the position underneath the parent, and now we have those parent-child relationships. Okay, now I want to be able to show you quickly that, for instance, if I want to come in here, and I want to be able to use my template library, I can come into my template library and be able to look at available templates and say I have falls. This is just a random example that I'm picking and then subordinate to the falls template are the various reasons in which falls could occur. And then I want to view my template. So my templates now define cause and effect relationships related to the item, the topic that we pick. Now let's say that I just want to come down from here, injuries from a fall, I want to copy it. I'm simply going to move back over to my tree options, where my original tree was. I'm going to right click, I'm going to use my menu, and I'm going to say paste. So essentially what I've done now is I've taken logic from a previous successful uh, analysis and been able to place it within a level to level area of my logic tree because that made sense in my case. So you continue to go through this type of uh, questioning process asking how could this happen and when you define what you believe your causes to be I simply can relabel this as a physical root. I can use my menu here and say I want to relabel as my human root and then I can come over here and relabel as my latent. Now obviously in reality this is a demo you, you would have many of these types of things but you know trees take the form of whoever the analyst is and you know it is what it is when we're going through a real live case. I just wanted to be able to get across how you can construct very easily this thing called a logic tree in Proact On Demand. So with that, I wanted to be able to give you a, a quick intro to what a guest account can uh, bring to you in terms of value. It'll, you're test driving the full car of Proact On Demand. You know the orientation process now and you can go in and construct your own examples. I hope you have enjoyed this orientation. I hope you will take the liberty and go ahead and uh, try Proact On Demand. You have the keys. Uh, go ahead and fill out the, the uh, subscription or the form. And now let's go ahead and get ready for the test drive. You have all the tools to be able to have great returns for your company. So good luck, and we hope to see you soon.